Howdy, Chip Hotley. I'm next door on the set of the Chip Hotley Cowboy Cooking Show. You gotta be colorful if you're a cowboy. We're doing an episode on cooking beans. Anyway, I, they asked me to come over here. I had a rodeo accident and, and I cut this <laughs> finger scalloping the braces inside this guitar and we don't have any violins here um, so anyway I'll try to illustrate the tone and sonic capabilities and playability of the guitar but my particular ability to play right now is not that good this guitar has died and gone to guitar heaven um, I bought it because it was a, a candidate. It spoke to me. They speak to me. Uh, it's a wordless conversation. It came with a typical floating bridge and tailpiece, and they always sound like crap. So I put this bridge on. This is ebony, solid ebony, and um, leveled the frets. The frets are in real good shape now. And uh, when I got it, I, I did it uh, basically in an evening and finished it the second evening. And uh, as an exercise in efficiency and presenting a parlor guitar that functioned, um, but it missed the mark. Uh, its tone wasn't that good, and it didn't have a good look about it. The sunburst finish was kind of weird. Um, if you go back, I don't know, you can't do it anyway. Um, I uh, decided to treat it the way I would want to be treated if I was this guitar. So I made a video of its transformation from a regular old... It's an unknown guitar, completely unknown. Anyway, I made a video of the finish that I've put on it. Um, this is the end of that video. And um, part of that work that I did was to modify the bracing. This had bracing to prevent the guitar top from pushing down due to the tailpiece. And the bracing was very strong. This guitar, I have no idea of the brand of the guitar. I know what brand it isn't. It is not a K, it's not a Harmony, or a Regal. That's my mistake there. I'm injured, you know. Sound like a piano there, don't it? Sorry, my hand is uh, not really responding to my. Uh,
from the previous demos and what I've been able to do by working on the bracing is to give these strings some ring. They're ringing now. Uh, uh, that one rings. There is an inherent boxiness in um, parlor guitars. If you get your uh, guitar like this and get it X braced and pay $1,500 or so, you can get rid of uh, <coughs> some of the ladder bracing. Um, anyway, this is a true ladder brace guitar. The sound is very. Uh, um, I just strung it up, so we'll have to stop and tune it. Um, it's got the boxy sound, and it's part of the vintage sound of a guitar like this. Some have it more, some have it less. Um, if somebody wants to work more on the bracing, you could probably extract more uh, bass and less box, but you got to know when to stop. Um, <clears throat> anyway, part of the transformation that I did recently was to add real binding to the sound hole. The original was painted. Um, I treated the fretboard uh, to give it a more antique look and I put real pearl dots in. There were three clay dots, but I didn't have clay, so I had to replace them all. I put the uh, little star on the peg head and um, refinished the whole guitar. You can see the back looks like a pretty good faux rosewood job. That's what it would have look like had it been a regal or a harmony um, and the sides um, are also the same faux treatment including the binding the binding was painted white um, and the top is a dark rosewood looking color but you just can't hardly see it in this light um, there's a little bit of it you can see in there um, as I said, I don't know where the guitar was made, someplace in the world. Um, it's been Americanized, <laughs> if it wasn't made in America. And uh, I'm going to retune it and come back and play a little more. <clears throat> anyway, Chip Oatley, uh, live cowboy cooking show, is on the, it's mostly just on the web, you know, it's from Paramus. And being in Sedona, and I gotta fly. Oh, it's terrible. Um, we're at the old two guys from Harrison uh, facility. The whole we got the whole place now. <laughs> can't play in this tuning so I'll make some chords and
it out. Ah. Um, that ain't bad. I'm using my uh, finger and thumb. Uh, I'm more used to it, and I don't have to use the one that's cut. <laughs> um, I usually try to play some numbers, but ah, I'm not in that good a shape. So you're going to have to depend on what you're hearing here. We can keep going. Um, my guitars have low action, good intonation, and uh, <coughs> lots of mojo. This thing's at least 60 years old, and it looks more like 80 at this point. <coughs> the finish is not like the finish on a Martin or a Gibson. I made this finish to look like the guitar has collected <coughs> little dings and nicks and imperfections over its 60 or 80 year life, and they're part of what I I've done here. If you look real close and stuff, you'll see imperfections. If I put a Martin finish on here, that's five hundred dollars just for the finish. So I mean, a style of, you know, the, the deep, perfect finish. It's a playing guitar. Thank you.